Uh, so Amaya is now going to talk about uh, visual attention mechanism in uh, deep learning. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So this is the last uh, lecture of this summer seminar. Uh, so I'm going to talk about attention models because they're kind of a trending topic right now in deep learning. So let's see how, how they work. Uh, so the motivation of this attention models, uh, you could think of, okay, all the, or most of the networks that we've seen so far, they take an, an input, it could be an image, mostly it's an image, uh, and you use the whole input to predict an output. So here you have an image of a bird, and you predict bird, and that's it. But uh, not the whole input is equally important to, and not the whole input contributes equally to this uh, output. Uh, so here you might wonder, okay, well, maybe, it's fine, I can afford just computing the convolutions for all this entire input. But you could have really big images where only a few pixels represent actually the class that you want to predict. So here, maybe actually attention models can actually help to relieve the computational burden that these big networks sometimes require. So especially for big images, that's really helpful. Uh, so yeah, that, that would be the ideal. We want to, uh, what we want is something that is able to attend to a particular uh, region that is helpful, not the entire volume, okay? So before we uh, go in depth again with images that we actually like very much, so we're here talking about computer vision, let's recap uh, to what uh, Tavi explained before. So he was talking about, uh, so he made this introduction based on uh, translation, so text translation, and he presented this encoder decoder, um, so there's two stages. There's a network that first uh, encodes the uh, sentence into a single representation. So there's a LSTM there that reads all the representations for all the words in a, in a sentence. And it produces an output, so a single vector. And then from that vector, you produce the translation. Okay? But then this, this, the original sentence that you want to translate is only seen once. And it's, and it's represented by the same vector to produce every single output word in the decoder. Okay? So that we don't like very much, you could say, because you use the whole input equally to predict every every step. So here's where an attention model could, could help. Uh, this is actually what people did in translation uh, after a while as well. And I think that this is the idea where, so it came from here, and now we use it in vision all the time. So and it's usually like that. So many things have, have uh, been done in the community of the, that deal with text and natural language then are uh, brought into the vision community. So, so here we have the same, so we have this uh, um, sentence here, and we have a representation for each one of the words. But here, instead of processing this uh, uh, series of, of inputs and producing a single one, what we do is we use all of them at the same, for each time step in the decoder. But what we do is for each time step in the, in the decoder, uh, what we do is we compute the set of attention weights to be uh, applied in the, in the input, okay? So, and this attention weights ch change over time. So at each time step, you predict the weights and you average. Um, so you do a weighted sum using these attention weights over the input, and that produces the first word. So la would be the first. And then in the second time step, you would predict another set of attention weights that are also based on the, on the previous time step, because remember that this, this has memory. So that's how you would go. So at each time step, the attention changes, which means that you can focus at different parts of this sentence and the input to predict uh, each word in the output. So that's how an attention model works. But this is for text. And we want to do this for, for images. So again, Tavi talked about another application that is image captioning, which is basically very similar. So it's doing translation, but the input is not a, a sentence. It's an image. And you want to translate that into uh, a sentence. Uh, so the, the idea here is the same in what Xavi explained before. It's, well, it's very similar to what I said before. So you have an image, and you encode that image into a single representation. And that single representation is used to uh, initialize the LSTM. And then the LSTM starts predicting uh, a sentence, OK? And says, well, a bird flying, whatever, and I'm done. But again, here is the same problem, that the this LSTM only sees the image once, and the representation for the image never changes. So it, it encodes the, the whole image. So what we want to do here instead is to take the image and find some kind of representation, but that preserves sort of the local information in the image. And what we want to do is to feed that to initialize the, the LSTM. But here, instead of predicting just the first word and then and go from that, what you predict is a set of attention weights. And then these weights, you can use them. So as we did before with text, we do it with this, this visual features. For example, it could be a convolution, convolutional uh, layer. So you take your attention weights and you basically do this sum, this weighted sum using these attention weights over the convolutional volume. 
and then again you get this uh, representation for for your image that is would be z1 and that you use that that to predict the next the next word and then you go over and you would do the same you would take the prediction uh, at that time step you would get the new set of attention weights that have been predicted at that time you use them to uh, produce a single representation based on the sum uh, of the weighted features uh, of the convolutional layer, and that's been used. That's used to predict the next word, and you go over and over and until the, the LSTM predicts that that's the end of the sequence. So you see that here the input is changing based on this attention weight that are predicted over the image. So this is actually uh, the paper where they introduced this. So I don't know if you remember that Xavi before he mentioned the paper that was called Show and Tell, blah blah blah. So now you have Show, Attend, and Tell, and say yeah. So this. Uh, um, a scheme here is more or less what I explained. So you have your image, you have a convolutional neural network, you reach the, the feature map, so the feature maps in a convolutional layer, and from there you uh, train an LSTM to attend over different parts on the convolutional layer and predict a series of words. Okay? And here is uh, some of the results that you get. So you have the same image that we've been using all the time, and you see that this will be the predicted sentence. And if you look at uh, the, what this is, is the attention weights that are predicted at each time step, that it, and when each word is being predicted. So here you see, for example, when the word bird is predicted, you see that actually the attention is looking at the bird, and that when you predict water, you have no attention in the bird, but you do in the water. So it kind of makes sense, and it's doing something that you can actually... Um, so there's some uh, explanation on and, and how, why this works. So that's a nice way of uh, proving that what your model is doing is kind of understandable and you would do it in the same way. So here you see that there are two different rows, and this is why, because there are two different types of attention, which I'm going to try and explain a little bit now. Uh, but first, yeah, see, so here are more examples uh, with the same, uh, the same algorithm. So here you have an image and the sentence that's been um, produced and you have a word uh, highlighted and it's the same. You hear, you see the attention over the image. And it's interesting to see that it's actually, well, these are from the paper. I don't know what would happen if you would do it with your image. I don't know if you would get this, uh, so examples that look this pretty. But the idea is that it's, it's working, right? So it's understanding where are the, the regions in the image that are interesting to predict each word, which is kind of nice, right? So let's go uh, in depth with uh, what I was talking about. There are two different uh, ways of uh, this building these attention models. The first one, and the, actually the easiest one, is this one that is called soft attention, which is the one that I actually was talking about before. So as I said, you have uh, an input image, you have your convolutional layer, and then you predict a set of uh, weights over that layer, which are called the, the attention weights. And then what you do is just summarize all the locations, so you sum uh, all the all the, con the convolution and activations uh, using these uh, attention weights that you've predicted. So then it means that all inputs actually are still contributing to the output. It's just that you give them weights. Okay. So uh, the good part of uh, the, the good thing of this is that you can actually train it. Uh, so it's differentiable. It's a function that depends on all inputs. So you can train that with gradient descent, and it's all nice. But still, you know, the whole input is used, and you're uh, also fixed. Uh, so your input is constrained to that fixed grid that. Uh, that the convolutional layer defines. So that's actually not very good because if you remember, I was giving this motivation that attention models should help us alleviate the computational uh, so it's, yeah, the computational complexity. Uh, so if you're still using the whole input, you're not saving any anything really. So that's how uh, that's why there's also another set of uh, attention models that are called uh, hard attention. So here you're not. Uh, predicting a set of weights over the entire input, but instead you're just focusing on a part of the input. So you're basically removing uh, inputs and you're just focusing on some of them. And then you would just, it would be just cropping the, the input, right? Uh, and the problem here is that this turns out that it's not uh, a differentiable function. You can think of this as it, as it being a step function where you just select some inputs and not, or not some others. And this is not differentiable, so the gradient is zero almost everywhere, and in the threshold, it just, it's not defined. So it turns out that you can train that. You cannot train it with gradient descent. So you need to use this technique that Tavi was referring before. It's called reinforcement learning. I won't go into how that works, but you have a link here that you can click, and there's a nice blog post by Karpathy that explains it. So you can, you can do that, but I'm not going to cover this. So uh, here are some of examples uh, that are actually using hard attention that are trained with reinforcement learning. So an example here is uh, this paper that is called Draw. 
uh, that they do two different things. So first, what they do is uh, they aim at classifying images. So they have this data set that is called cluttered MNIST. So it's MNIST, this uh, uh, data set that you've been using that has uh, handwritten digits. But it's like with clutter. So the, the numbers are moved around, and there's some noise to make things difficult. So the idea is that what they do is to try and classify these, uh, these new images that are more difficult. And they have an attention model that is uh, based on hard attention that basically just tries to look for that uh, for the, the object in a smart way. So it doesn't see the whole input at all, at all times. It just learns where to go. And when it finds it, 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 it produces the output. And then they also uh, do something else that is uh, called, well, it has to do with what Kevin was explaining regarding the generative models. So instead of classifying, you just want to generate numbers. And they have an attention model for, for that as well that attends at different regions in the output, and it refines this uh, generation of, of, of numbers. So I think I have an example here of how this works after, after you've trained it. So it actually, it's, it's really interesting to see how it refines this uh, generated so fake images. And you see that it actually has some kind of movement that maybe you, you, could, you, could, you could think that there's, that's the way how humans write. Or maybe not, but it, it does something that has kind of a, a pattern, right? And they also do this so not only for MNIST, but for uh, house numbers from Google Street View. And they also achieve similar results. I don't have a video here or a GIF, but it's the same idea. There's also uh, this other work that, uh, so instead of uh, generating images, what you generate, so you learn to generate handwritten uh, text. So it's basically the same. You have uh, an attention model that learns to uh, attend the different uh, regions in the output, and it generates text. And here are a few examples of how uh, <laughs> the type of text that it generates. There's a demo uh, that I've put uh, so in the, in the last slide where you can just type some random text, and you will generate, so that the network will generate uh, different samples from it. And it's, yeah, it's kind of nice. So, but this is, so again, we are talking about hard attention, right? So we don't like that much that we can train with, with gradient descent because we like it and reinforcement learning, we don't even know how to do that. So let's try and find a way to do this, but we want to make it differentiable. So that's what, how, uh, that's what, a, what a paper called Special Transformer Networks actually did. So the idea is the, so the same that I'm, that I'm saying. You have a, an input image and you want to crop somehow a region that maximizes your output. Okay, so here you would want to predict BERT, but you want to focus on the BERT to, to predict it. Um, so the way that, that you do this is to find uh, a, a function that maps every pixel in the output uh, into a pixel in the input. So if you do that for all pixels, you get like a sampling grid. So you have for every pixel in the output, you have uh, where it is in the, in the input. And then you just do, use bilinear inter interpolation to get your cropped image. So that, that uh, process that I've described is just, uh, it requires for you to learn this matrix that defines the affine uh, transformation. So actually, this is a, a, a layer in the network that you can put actually everywhere. So it's fully differentiable, so there's no problem. You can put it, I don't know, whatever you want. You have your VGG. You can put it between all the convolutional layers, or you can put two uh, coming out of a convolutional layer and then continue. So it's, very, it's a very nice uh, work. And here are some examples of the things that you can obtain. So basically, in these this three columns here, you have A, that this is the input. And B would be the transformation that has been predicted. C would be what you get after applying this transformation, and D gives you the output. So basically, they, they do this experiment. So they train for classification, and they're just trying to see what's the appropriate way of uh, rotating or modifying the input so that you maximize the, 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 the probability of the right output. So they, they also do this other experiment with uh, fine-grained classification. So here you have a data set that is it's all birds, but different species of birds. So it's kind of difficult to train and to, well, to perform well in this task. So they have two different, well, at least in the first uh, row, they have two different special transformers. So they, they run in parallel. And then at the end, the inputs are combined, and you get the the, the, the classification. So then you, you train it this way and for to classification, and then you can um, visualize what each, each one of these special transformer layers has learned. And it turns out that, uh, well, most of the times you see that one of them has focused on the head of the birds, because that's a part that I guess is distinctive to recognize which type of, type of bird it is. And then the other one is seem, it seems to uh, focus on the lower part. I don't know how that's called in a bird, but you get the idea. So different parts in birds that help you identify which bird it is. And you can do it as, for as many special transforms as you want. So you have a, if you have a problem that is very complex, you can just put many of them so that it, they will help you 
classify better. So yeah, as I said before, attention is a very trending topic. So here I put a few examples of uh, works that have applied attention to their problems. So here's one that also Xavi uh, talked about, which is visual question answering. Uh, so here the authors, the thing that what, what they do, so they have, so you have your question and you have your image and you want to predict the answer. And they incorporate visual attention as they read the, the question. So in, in this way, what you, can, what you can do, you can think of, so you have your, your, your question and you could actually learn which parts of the image better align with which parts of the, of the question. So that way, well, they train it like this and then you can uh, visualize what the results they get. So here, for example, what kind of animal is in the photo? You see that the answer is a cat and you see that the area, well, I guess it's kind of highlighted in the cat. I, I wouldn't say it's very clear. It was clearer in the other one, but yeah, you can see that the areas where the cat is are activated highly. So there's other applications uh, where you can apply this. So here are a couple of examples. So the first one uh, is uh, to for action recognition in videos. So uh, here what they do, so they have a video and they divide it in different frames. And at each frame they want a prediction. So what activity is this? So in there they incorporate a visual attention model that is a soft attention in this case. And uh, so what they do is to try to, uh, try to find the areas in the image that help you, uh, again, classify that frame correctly. And then finally, there's this uh, other word that uses that, that uh, use uh, special transformers for salient object detection. So here, salient object detection would be like uh, segmentation, but here we're only focusing on 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 objects that are salient. So what they do here is they treat that this uh, saliency problem as a as so you would do it in, in steps. So not only, so you have your image and traditionally what you would do is run a fully convolutional uh, network and you get your output, your saliency and you're done. But here they do it in different steps and each step is supposed to refine the output of the previous step. So the way that this works is that you have your, your image, you run it through your CNN and you predict a set of attention weights that in this case they're not attention weights but are the parameters of the special transformers. So then you apply that transformation to the image and you have a cropped uh, portion of that image, and you use that to update the the saliency result. You do like basically you do the inverse of the, the special transformers, and then and you update the, the the output. And you do that several times, and you can see well, I don't know if you can see, but the idea is that the saliency is refined at each time step using attention, so it focuses uh, in different in different areas in the image. So there's other examples here. I mostly have talked about uh, visual atten attention. So you have an image or, you have, or, or features that relate to an image and you learn to attend to different parts of this image. But you can also attend to other things. So it can be any feature, really. So we saw actually a couple of works here that are all in CVPR. I told you that this was very trending, uh, a very trending topic. So in CVPR, we saw attention everywhere. So here's an example where uh, they use attention uh, to scale instead of attention to visual features. So what they do, uh, and they use this for semantic segmentation. So what they do is they uh, run the, the image through the network at different scales. And then basically the network is choosing which scale it should choose in order to predict the output. And then there's also this work uh, that they do semantic, uh, semantic attention for image captioning in this case. So here, instead of uh, taking the image and running it through a convolution, uh, convolutional neural network and get the features, they uh, run a classifier. So a convolutional neural network that does classification on the image. So then the output is a set of concepts that are in the image. So a wave or whatever, a people or whatever it is. So then you have all these vectors that represent concepts. And what they do is they learn this attention model that learns uh, to which concepts it should be attending to when it predicts, it, it, it outputs the, the sequence of, uh, of words. So that's uh, all. I'm sure that I missed many works in attention because they come out pretty much every day. Uh, but here are a few of the resources of the things that I talked about and also some code of the, especially the special transformers and the draw uh, algorithm that are implemented in almost every deep learning framework. But I, here I put some of them that maybe they could be useful. There's also the handwriting generation demo that I talked about. It's pretty cool if you want to try. And also the uh, reinforcement learning um, block that I guess because this is not going to be covered here so if you're interested you can read on that so that's it uh, any questions <laughs>